Tech family, today we are going to tackle one of the most annoying things about modern laptops, fan noise and heat. In this video, I'm going to walk you through every possible thing that I know of that you can do to reduce it or stop it. I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. And that's why I believe a video like this is so important. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, take a moment to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these. Originally, I was going to first provide a primer of why heat and fan noise is an issue in modern laptops, and then talk about what you can do about it, but the video was just way too long. So instead, I'm just going to cut to the chase and tell you what you can do about it. At the end of the day, all laptops perform differently, so most of these solutions you really need to try on your own device to find which works for you. I have with me the Dell XPS 9300, one of the warmest feeling devices I've used in 2020. As I walk through this guide, I'm going to perform these tasks on this laptop and at the end show you the results. Please note, I will also provide some insights into what Mac users can do as well. Now before we get into the guide, heads up, there are a variety of people who watch this channel with a range of experience in computers, from novices right through to those who code in VI. I'm going to start with some really basic things that you can do and build up to the more advanced. Changing the laptop's cooling profile. The first thing you should do is look whether your laptop has a quiet or cool mode. This may sound obvious, but to be honest, it wasn't for me. For Dell, you'll find it in Dell's power management software, for example. Gigabyte's Aero has one, so does MSI, etc, etc. If you can't find one on your laptop, then just call the manufacturer to ask if yours has one and if so, where it is. In my experience, quiet modes tend to prevent the fans from spinning above a certain speed, and instead throttle the processor, reducing its performance if it gets too hot. You may also see a cool mode. These tend to raise the fan speeds to make the laptop cooler to the touch. Unfortunately, this means the laptop will generate more noise. That being said, these profiles are definitely worth a try, especially if you're doing lightweight tasks that do not need the full power of your laptop. Here are the results of the Dell XPS using its quiet mode and cool mode compared to the default optimized mode. Quiet mode is a tad quieter, but really doesn't seem to do much in the latest version of the BIOS. You can see some pretty decent differences when it comes to the cool mode though. Rather than spin the fans up that much more, Dell seems to have opted to more heavily throttle the power to the CPU to keep it cool. Unfortunately, no laptop that I've tested with a quiet mode has ever had the fans turn off completely. Now, if you have a Mac, you'll probably have the opposite problem. Rather than hearing fan noise, Apple tends to prioritize low to no fan noise above everything. Their chassis will get very warm to the touch before you hear noise from the fan spinning up. Plus, their metal chassis conducts heat so they can feel very warm indeed. If you have a MacBook, you may want to do the opposite and increase the fan speed over Apple's default. That way the laptop doesn't get uncomfortably warm to the touch. To do that, you can download the app Max Fan Control, and then for each of the fans set either a constant fan speed or set the fans to start spinning up once the CPU temperature hits a certain range. I tend to just set my MacBook Pro 16's fans to spin at a constant 3500 RPM each. I find this is a good balance between keeping the chassis cool and a little fan noise. Next thing I'd like you to do is look for software that is causing the fans to spin up. Oftentimes, poorly written software can place extra load on your computer, pushing your computer's processor to run when it shouldn't, causing the fan to spin up to cool it. To check this on Windows, press the Windows key and X, and then select Task Manager. On the Process tab, order the processors by CPU% percent in reverse order. See if any processors are using a large amount of your CPU that shouldn't be. For example, I use an application called YOLO Mouse, which makes the mouse cursor larger so I can better see it in games when I play on a high resolution display. Sometimes that software seems to go berserk and chew up a massive amount of my CPU's power and fan noise is generated. I found that if I killed the process by clicking end task, the fans would go back to normal and I could reopen the app and it would work as expected. On the Mac, by the way, you go to Spotlight and type in Activity Monitor and you can do the same thing as you can on Windows. Reverse sort by processor usage and kill the offending software. Please note, one, obviously some software is expected to use a large amount of resources, like exporting a video in Premiere Pro. Don't kill these processes. In fact, only kill processes that you know what they are and are certain they shouldn't be using so much of your CPU. Two, the Chrome browser uses a notoriously large amount of resources. If it's frequently causing this, then try closing some browser tabs or restarting the browser entirely. If this still occurs, try a different browser like Safari on the Mac or Edge on Windows, which may perform better. Updating your software. On the note of erroneous software, another simple one. Make sure all your BIOS drivers, Windows version and software is up to date. 
it is definitely possible that erroneous software may be fixed in updated versions or there may be improvements to how efficiently any software runs. Most computers have at least three places to do this. Your operating system for Windows under settings, your manufacturer's software updater, here is Dell's, the component manufacturer like Intel, AMD, or Nvidia, which may have drivers available for your computer before your laptop's manufacturer adds these latest drivers to their software updater. Oh, and there's also a fourth. Your application that you're using might also have an updated version. I'll post links to the common ones in the description below. Disabling Turbo Boost. Taking a look at how some of the quiet and cool modes work, where they often restrict the power to the CPU, one of the more extreme methods that can work very well for some users is to disable Turbo Boost. Turbo Boost is what enables a CPU to raise its speed above the base level. On the common 10th gen i7-1065G7 CPU, it runs at a base speed of 1.3 GHz and can Turbo Boost up to 3.9. The higher the gigahertz the laptop runs, the more heat is generated and the more airflow is needed to cool the laptop. So, fan spin up. Turning off Turbo Boost will have the laptop speed max out at its base clock. This solution can make a huge difference to fan noise and heat. I'd advise trying it out in the following circumstances. If you know you are only going to do very light tasks on the laptop, or if your laptop has a high base speed to begin with. For example, the older 7th Gen i7-7500U processor has a decently high base speed of 2.7 GHz. Most laptop manufacturers offer the ability to change the setting in the laptop's BIOS, often accessed by pressing F2 on startup. Be super careful of changing settings in here as it can really stuff up your system. I prefer to change this setting in software using throttle stop. You can select this checkbox here. That way I don't have to restart the laptop to turn it on and off. Now I totally understand the people who feel that they shouldn't have to resort to turning off Turbo Boost. It technically heavily throttles your CPU far below what is advertised by the manufacturer. That being said, it does work for making your laptop cooler and quieter in most instances. Here are my results from the Dell XPS 9 300. As you can see, it does make the laptop run a little bit cooler and quieter at the expense of some CPU performance. Laptop risers and cooling pads. If your laptop is still too warm, what you could do is purchase a laptop riser or a cooling pad. These lift the laptops up so there is better airflow to cool it. Cooling pads usually have fans that provide additional airflow on top of your laptop's fans. These are normally powered via USB. Although these can work very well, especially cooling pads, both tend to result in a little more noise. So only look at these if that isn't a concern for you. The laptop riser because the fans from the laptop are louder when lifted off the table and the cooling pad because of their additional fans. As you can see, in the case of the Dell XPS 9 300, the laptop performs substantially better with the cooling pad. I purchased a rather cheap cooling pad from Amazon that worked really well and didn't add that much noise, so I'll post a link to it in the description below. Next thing you can try is undervolting. With undervolting, you are trying to run your CPU by feeding it less power. This can result in the CPU running a little faster as it doesn't produce as much heat and therefore won't throttle as easily to cool down. To say it another way, your laptop will run faster while producing the same amount of heat and fan noise. But this video is about making your laptop run cooler and quieter. So why are we talking about undervolting? The reason is this. If your laptop can process a task faster, it can more quickly return to an idle state where it generates less heat and the fans don't spin as much. Sounds great, right? There is a catch. If you undervolt your laptop too much, it will crash. For Intel CPUs on Windows, there are two easy ways to undervolt your laptop, using the application Throttle Stop or Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. Links in the description below. I found that Throttle Stop works on more devices. For Throttle Stop, you may have difficulty installing it. If you get the missing DLL error, go to the link in the description below and install both the 32-bit x86 and 64-bit version. Once installed, click the FIVR button. Then unlock adjustable voltage and change your offset voltage. Apply the same to both CPU core and CPU cache. To determine what a safe undervolt is for your laptop, run Cinebench R20 a couple of times to put a large load on your processor. If you get a blue screen of death or freeze, your undervolt is too great. Note, if you start to get additional blue screens or instability in the days that follow when your laptop is undervolted, it is also probably too high. As a general rule of thumb, I start with a negative 100 millivolt and adjust from there. Some manufacturers like Razer even undervolt their laptops out of the box. By the way, there are some very detailed guides on undervolting on the net that go in a lot more depth than I'm able to do here. Definitely worth researching. As you can see from my Dell XPS 9300, when the processor is maxed out, the undervolt made my laptop run a little cooler and quieter, but it also made my laptop run 200 megahertz faster on all cores for the same thermal profile. The next set of solution involves taking the back off your laptop. A lot of reviewers and YouTubers make this seem easy, and for some laptops it certainly is. For many others it can be a challenging process. 
tons of clips holding the laptops back in place, or where screws are hidden under the rubber feet. The risk increases here. Use a spludging tool, be patient, and at all costs avoid damaging your laptop. If it feels like you'll break something, do not proceed. I'll post the screwdriver with interchangeable tips and the spludging kit I use in the description below. Cleaning your laptop's fans and vents. Your computer relies on airflow to cool it. Over time, dust builds up amongst the fans and air vents. This blocks the airflow and may result in more noise as the fans spin up to push the required amount of air to cool the machine. Plus, in many cases, this can result in higher temperatures if not enough air can be circulated. To resolve this, you want to clean your laptop of dust. After opening up the back of your laptop, use a can of compressed air to blow the dust out of the vents and other areas. Your laptop's cooling solution generally works in the following way. Heat pipes dissipate heat from your CPU and or GPU. Then fans blow air over the heatsink at the end of the pipes to cool them. A thermal paste is used to connect your laptop's processor to these heat pipes. Sometimes manufacturers use cheaper pastes or don't apply them correctly. To solve this, you'll want to buy a good thermal paste and reapply it. I bought Noctua's NTH2, which I'll link below. Once you have the laptop open, you should first ensure you are grounded so static charges don't occur, and then unplug the battery. You can buy grounding wrist straps to do this. In my case, on the Dell XPS, I could not pry the battery cable out. So I decided to take a risk and proceed with it powered down, but the battery still plugged in. I would not advise this. To repaste, you'll want to unscrew the heat pipes and heat sink. Now, often the screws over the heatsink are super tight. You may strip the screws if you try to force them. This has happened to me on several laptops. If that starts happening to you, stop. Instead, purchase these small vamp pliers that I'll link in the description below. This should enable you to get the screws out. Once you have removed the heatsink, clean off the old paste with alcohol on a swab. My Noctua paste actually came with some swabs with alcohol on them already, which was great. Once done and dried off, apply a very small amount of new paste. There are numerous videos online about the correct application of thermal paste. I'd suggest watching some of these. Once done, screw your laptop back together and you are good to go. Here are my results for the Dell XPS 9 300 after a repaste. As you can see, some modest improvement. Now, after applying many of these solutions together, you'll notice that in the Cinebench test that I ran, the Dell XPS got substantially faster, but it didn't run any cooler or quieter. That's because Dell natively tries to run this laptop as fast as possible in the same thermal envelope. This isn't all bad news though. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this means it can process tougher tasks faster and more quickly return to an idle state where it produces less heat and fan noise. Now your laptop may of course perform differently with these solutions. That being said, here is my final one. Some laptops just run loud and warm, have high pitched fan noise, and no matter what you do, nothing is gonna change that. And I'm sorry to say, you need to get a different laptop. Right now for light to moderate usage, I feel the MacBook Pros handle heat and fan noise pretty well. For a power user, look towards the HP Omen with Ryzen. That does a phenomenal job. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. And if you wanna show some additional support, become a Patreon member. Until next time, I will catch you later.